Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm here again with Channing Ayers of Asheville Vedic Astrology, ashvillevedicastrology.com. And if you want to get a session with her or learn more about her work, you can email her at Channing at ashvillevedicastrology.com. Welcome back, Channing. Hey, Ryan. Thanks. Yeah, good to see you again. Um, so we've been discussing the major transits that are going to be going on uh, in 2020, which has already started with the conjunctions of K2, Saturn, and Pluto um, in tropical Capricorn. So we've discussed that. If you need more information on that, you can go back to our previous video. Uh, and in this section, what we're going to talk about, uh, number one, are the eclipses that are occurring around this time, because that's also extremely important, and also uh, the Saurus cycles, um, which Channing just introduced me to. So um, which, which one of those would you like to start with, Channing? The Saurus cycles or the ideas of the eclipses? Well, let's talk about the eclipses and... Okay. Um, or I could, yeah, I could talk about the Sara cycles with the eclipses because they're, they're sort of are interconnected. So. Okay, well, let, let's talk about them together. But for the people like myself who don't know what those are uh, exactly, uh, go ahead and tell us what are these Sara cycles. And you showed me a book too. Um, mm -hmm. um, right. The, the book that I found um, that uh, I was turned on to is, it's, sorry, this is backwards, but it's Predictive Astrology by Burnett, Bernadette Brady. And she did some extensive research on the eclipse cycles and um, went back to the sorrow cycle is basically the, the, the beginning eclipse. Eclipses run in families and um, they, they can stretch over a couple of thousand years. <clears throat> so that Gary Caton, did we talk about that with Gary one time? We might have, we might have. It's a, it's pretty interesting subject matter and there's not a whole lot out there about it. Okay. But the principle is, is if you look at the mother chart of that eclipse, when that eclipse happened, you will see the energy of each of the eclipses that happen in that eclipse family. And so what Bernadette Brady did is identify all of these cycles and give a small um, little paragraph about the energy that that certain eclipse cycle is possibly going to bring. Okay. So each eclipse that we have is going to belong to a different family. And so what we get in 2019 and 2020 is we get a whole series of eclipses that are happening in the Capricorn K2 or the Capricorn Cancer axis. Um, this also is bringing in a family of sorrow cycles of some different cycles that we're going to see um, so while we have already experienced these sorrow cycles, you know, we have different eclipses at different times that are going to run through these cycles. Um, this adds a little bit more information to the eclipses because eclipses themselves are really hard for any sort of prediction. Okay. Okay. So then the ones that start in January of 2019, is that starting a new cycle or is that part of no, that's part of an old cycle. That's part of a, an eclipse that's been around um, since 991. 991, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going back into, so that, that's when that particular, that's the, the um, sorrow cycle of two south. Okay. So that particular cycle, you know, runs, they, they run every 17, 18 years. <laughs> we'll go through these cycles um, image wise. If you look at a picture of the globe from maybe on top of the globe, how can you look at it? Isn't the world flat? Um, I'm not getting into that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, yeah. So anyway, if you imagine the world as a globe and you see how the eclipses um, affect each area of the globe where they're actually visible, mm -hmm it'll create little bands around the earth because right. these eclipses are happening in cycles. So this show, this is interconnected with how to see the sorrow cycle. So would, would, they'd happen in different um, bands. So they would create a complete um, transit around the earth. Okay. So this has to do with spherical geometry and how the moon moves in relationship to the earth how the moon moves in relationship to the earth and how the earth moves in relationship to the sun. Right. Okay. And so if I'm understanding that correctly, and for people who are, who are listening, um, who don't know this, um, the moon moves in a sense, it looks like it's moving up and down, uh, uh, up 
through the earth. That's how the eclipses occur. It's like a, a spiral pattern around the earth. Is, is that what we're talking about here? Those kinds of bands? Yeah. Yeah. Those okay. kinds of bands, the spiral okay. patterns. So this is, um, this gives the more of the understanding of that mother, that mother eclipse when that eclipse actually started. Okay. Um, so each one of these eclipses is involved in a different cycle. So we've got the, um, the eclipses using or happening in two south, three north, three south, and four north. So they're, you know, they're kind of going in order like that. So each one of those eclipses is spelled out really interestingly in Bernadette's book um, about what we might expect because okay. of the nature of that mother eclipse. Sure. Um, so I, I can read that. I can share some of those. With yeah, that'd you. be great. Okay. So the, the, um, you know, the first eclipse that we're going to really talk about, I guess, is the January 6, 2019, because that's the first one that, um, that we're going to experience in that year of 2019. So I figured mm -hmm. we'd start with that. Um, and that, uh, the, the little, the little paragraph that she gives about that is this eclipse is concerned with unusual groups and the individual's involvement with these groups. This could be the time when the individual notices or suddenly desires to find a particular group whose concerns would be with healing, the arts, or the love of humanity. The individual will feel that through involvement with such a group, he or she will gain a great deal. Okay. So there's an aspect and energy of groups and mm -hmm. the involvement of um, the collective. So that's one and also an artistic and kind of healing approach artistic healing and yeah the connectivity with people who share that interest okay and that's i mean what i use the sorrow cycles for is just to give me a clue you know give me an understanding of how this one might might unfold and so that's the eclipse of january 6th and then we're going to have another eclipse on july 2nd 2019 um and that eclipse is when Saturn and K2 are actually in conjunction. They're okay. right on top of each other. So that's an interesting aspect to this eclipse that's going to be happening on July 2nd. It's a new moon solar eclipse. Um, the, the new moon's happening in Cancer. Um, but the Saturn K2 conjunction's happening in Capricorn. Mm. And that eclipse is going to be... Um, Three North. So that's the next one. Um, and this one, she has to say, um, this is an over excessive eclipse family. Its main theme being either news involving young people or news that transforms the situation. The information can cause worry or it can cause the person to become obsessive. The individual may want to undertake large plans or activities, which can be very positive as long as the individual doesn't get carried away. Hmm. Okay. And this is happening when K2 and Saturn are in conjunction mm -hmm. and it's happening when sun and Saturn are in opposition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The okay. sun and Saturn will be in opposition in the sign of cancer. So there'll be a focus on the energy of cancer on that okay. one. And what's the date again for that? That's July 2nd, 2019. Okay. So, you know, obviously this kind of speaks to an idea of, um, it seems like it, extreme power struggles uh, between um, Sun and Saturn, which is what? Um, sun represents the government and corporations and places of power and Saturn is you know, common people and the 1% and those sorts of things. So mm -hmm. hmm, that'll be an interesting July then, I suppose. Yeah, it's and it's going to be interesting to see how these eclipses sort of click together, how they fit together in their theme. Um, the next yeah. eclipse that well, so, we have well, wait wait so the question then would be then is that first eclipse in january is that going to be the 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 optimism that comes in in regards to what could possibly be experienced by our collective consciousness and then the the eclipse in july is that the um intensity required to bring that to light or is that the um or is that the powers that be trying to beat it down <laughs> that's the question well I mean, the interesting thing is that January, so that January 6th eclipse that happens in 2019 that you're asking about, um, Jupiter's not into Capricorn yet. Jupiter's still in the sign of Sagittarius until next November. So these eclipses that we're talking about don't include that Jupiter. So Jupiter's going to be in, 
it's um, in its own home, but it's not going to be in any sort of aspect right. to, these, to these planets. It's not going to really, it's going to be in the 12th house from these planets. Um, so there's going to be an aspect to that Jupiter that's happening that's behind the scenes, but doesn't right. really influence. Now, the planet that does come in in the January 6th, that first one we started talking about, is Mars. Mars mm -hmm. is going to be in Aries at that time. And Mars in Aries is going to be in a square aspect to all of these planets. It's going to be in a square aspect um, to the sun. And then it, as it moves forward, it's going to square every single one of those planets that are involved in that, um, in that first one. So I think there might be some, some new beginnings that happen at that point or some new information. That was the one that said, um, <clears throat> Let's see. That was the one that was too south. Um, that was the unusual groups. Uh, that, was, that was the artistic and the beginnings. But there's an energy of that Mars coming in, really, um, that pushing energy um, that we're going to have to see how that turns out. Because later on in some of these eclipses, Mars will be involved, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, so we have that too south. And then we have the July 2nd when Saturn and K2 are in an exact conjunction at that point and then the next eclipse that we have is july 16th 2019 um that's going to be uh three north as well so that has that's still in that cycle um <clears throat> but that's an interesting one because um we've got saturn conjuncting k2 we have an exact opposition to venus mm. conjuncting rahu in cancer so venus is going to be in rahu in cancer and the moon is going to be exactly conjunct Pluto. So the moon, the sun will be opposing Pluto. Moon will be in, connected to Pluto. <laughs> Venus will be conjunct Rahu. Um, and Saturn will be conjunct K2. Right. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a lot of opposition. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of polar opposites. Hmm. And that was and, the Ju July 16th, is that what you said? <clears throat> yeah, July 16th, 2019. And so those are the ones where we have Saturn and K2 and the sun, the sun comes in and, and uh, is in opposition to Pluto and the moon conjuncts Pluto. So Pluto really comes into play in that, in that um, July 16th. Um, and then the next one we have is on Christmas or okay. the day after Christmas, December 26, 2019. Okay. Um, of this, yeah, this upcoming year. Um, and that one is Saturn and Pluto will be conjuncting. Mm. <laughs> and Jupiter will move, will be, have moved into that mix. So that's when Jupiter moves into the sign of Capricorn earlier in that November. And then the first eclipse that Jupiter becomes involved with. Okay. Um, and Jupiter will be ex in exact conjunction with the sun and the moon during that eclipse. Right. So hopefully all those struggles and possible uh, friction and trials of that July eclipse with Jupiter coming into play might give some positive results by that time. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> We've got Saturn conjuncting Pluto. Um, that's, you know, that's definitely an interesting connection of those two planets together. They have a lot of intensity when they come together. They're very um, powerful in their influence. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be exactly conjuncting at about 22 degrees. Um, or that's the one that's after that. They're not going to be exact, but they'll be within a degree of each other. They'll be about 21 degrees. That, what's the date on that? That one's December 26, 2019. December 26, let's see. I just wanted to see what was going on in the, uh, the D10 with those two guys. Um, and that's Saturn and Pluto? Yep. Well, it looks like in the D10, they're not going to be in the same sign just yet. Right. The next, the next eclipse is January 10th. So they, you know, they go in those pairs like about two weeks apart. Right. Um, 
And that January 10th, they, I think they're in almost exact conjunction. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So they, they enter the same uh, D10 by, looks like, starts earlier than I thought. Oh, well, it's not too many days after that. It's uh, December 28th when they're in the same, um, when they're in Aries. Uh, mm -hmm. in so that will be interesting. So mm -hmm. Saturn's going to have, so Saturn's going to be debilitated in right. the end when that eclipse occurs, which means, um, sounds like he's going to have some weakness there and that Pluto might be able to smash a bit of the strength out of him since he's not going to have the support from the D10. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to look at that. Right. So we see this Saturn in Capricorn as being the ruler of Capricorn, but we also see Saturn in the D10, Saturn in the different Vargas are going to have a different energy. Saturn is going to be in debilitation in, in some regards in that, that time frame of that eclipse. Right. Um, so while it's a strong Saturn, when we look at it in one direction, there is a weakness to that Saturn. There's a, a lack of follow through. There's a, a lack of um, endurance, you know, right. in the sign of Aries, it doesn't, not going to want to do take care of the tasks mm -hmm. that are at hand. So. Yeah, or also whatever is getting destroyed, you know, by that Pluto going with Saturn, that it might indicate that Saturn's able to put on a good show of not being destroyed, <laughs> of standing strong, but really on the inside doesn't have much strength to to withstand it for very long or to keep up that show. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Yeah, some transitions. Some so that's also when we were talking about in the earlier videos, what about that Saturn wanting to build that Saturn wanting to create structure? Well, there we see in the, in the D10, that Saturn's not going to really be able to hold on. It's not going to really be able to create structure. It's going to maybe succumb to some of the influences of those dissolving planets in there. Maybe we'll be able to prevent world war three before it actually starts. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really good. That would be really good. Yeah. Um, so the the three north, the the energy of the three north. That's these two eclipses that we've been talking about, December twenty sixth in two thousand nineteen and January tenth two thousand twenty. Those are those are three south. Sorry, okay. three south. Um, <clears throat> can we talk about three north? Yeah. Okay. Seems like we did. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the three south. This is where it gets a little bit intense. The family, this family of eclipses brings with it sudden endings of associations or of a relationship, possibly with a younger person. There is a large emotional component as the Pluto is involved and a sense of traumatic transformation. This can be through news received or short journeys undertaken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a, there's a theme here. I think that the phrase that sticks out is that just that traumatic transformation or there's something that shifts something sudden maybe um, inspired by <laughs> younger generations that could be inspired by younger generations it could be um it could be a a point where um where we really come to some clarity of what the climate change might be bringing for younger generations there could mm -hmm. be some news involved um, the, it, it's just interesting to see what that, what that one could be. And so, um, you know, if we were going to focus on one of these eclipses as being kind of the, the big one, mm -hmm. that would be that January 10th, 2020, that one has a certain element to it. Um, the January 10th one that there's a lot of energy coming together in that sign. Right. There's a lot so of you, yeah. Extreme changes in uh, extreme changes in uh, shifts in in power possibly with uh, mm -hmm. people who are maintaining the status quo, huh? Yeah, this definitely um, seems like it could have a really big manifesto quality in our government, right? Because of the nature of Capricorn and the nature of Saturn and the Sun being involved, all of those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, 
that there's there's potential shift of power or shift of consciousness or dest destructive elements of the powers, the traditions that we've seen and a reintroduction of some new traditions. What's, you know, what's interesting about this though, is that we do still have this trine. We do still have this trine from Uranus. So there's an element of the newness coming in, um, in, a, in an innovative and supportive way. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> after these eclipses, which we're, we can talk about this at another time, but, um, you know, we're going to move into the Saturn Uranus square mm -hmm. and the Jupiter Uranus square, which is like a 44 year cycle that happens. So, you know, that's a little bit smaller of a cycle, but that's definitely going to be the follow up to some of this, some of this um, energy moving through Capricorn, the shift, the, um, <clears throat> the breakdown of certain things, the rebuilding of certain things. Um, there's going to be, you know, some energies still lingering for a few years after this. This isn't going to be, this isn't going to be like, woo, okay, I'm glad 2020 is done. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> moving on to next year, you know, there's, there's definitely an impact with this. Right. Um, and it, it's, um, it can be, it can be really challenging because we've got all these heavier, cruel planets that are involved, but I think in general that Uranus trine is showing there's a movement, there's a collective movement towards the more positive aspect mm -hmm. of these, that this is going to be breaking things down so that we have the ability to move, that we have the ability to evolve. I mean, if we're on the ascending cycle of the, of the yuga cycles, we're, it's inevitable. You know, okay. we're, going to, we're going to move forward in our evolutionary process. We're getting, we're getting pruned so the plant can grow stronger rather than chopped down so we can throw it in the fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so were there any other eclipses that you thought we should go into for this particular uh, discussion? Well, those are the, um, you know, those are the main ones. There's another one in June, um, 2021. That's also, in, you know, in that, um, that, that also looks a little bit challenging. That's at the zero degrees cancer in the, in the sorrow cycles. But mm -hmm. um, I think that, um, I think that these all have to do with just that, that understanding of that there's going to be some change. There's going to be some shift. There's going to be some surrender. I think mm -hmm. this, this lineup really looks at the idea of surrendering to these changes um, <clears throat> and then looking forward to seeing what's on the other side. Right, right. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll just leave that with people to, to contemplate a little bit. And um, in our next discussion in this series, uh, we'll get into uh, the metaphysical and historical uh, understanding of these eclipses. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. Well, it's good seeing you again. Bye.